this is problem number one from the 2011 AP Physics B exam. We're dealing with uh, mechanics, more specifically motion and later on a hint of dynamics and energy. And so we have a velocity time graph given with three clear segments A, B, and C. And we're talking about a 0.4 kilogram object moving in a straight line, so just one-dimensional motion under the action of a net force. And we have this 25 second interval plotted for us, and we know at time equals zero, the object began at the initial position. And so for A, we want to sketch down here the acceleration time graph for this object. So to do that, we need to understand how we can interpret the acceleration for each of these three segments. And if you recognize this being a velocity time graph, you'll see here that the slope of the graph does represent acceleration, because remember, slope is rise over run, or change in y over change in x. In this example, the y variable is velocity, and the x variable is time, and change in velocity over time is acceleration. So to be able to accurately, pl accurately plot our points, we're going to need to find the slope for each segment. So I'm going to do that right here. The slope of segment A is going to be the rise over run of segment A. So that'll be 10 meters per second over 5 seconds. We're going to get a 2 meter per second squared slope. And that's the acceleration for segment A. Segment B, the slope is 0 because there is no rise. And then segment C, we're going to get the rise over run there, and the rise is actually negative. It'll be negative 5, so negative 5 meters per second, over its run, which is 10 seconds. We're going from 15 to 25. So we get a negative 0 0.5 meter per second squared slope, which represents the acceleration. So now we need to plot these appropriately. So the first segment is 2 meters per second squared for 5 seconds. I know that I'm going to have a maximum range of 2 and a smaller value of negative 0.5. So I know that the, I need to begin at a negative value down here, and I need to finish at a positive value. Um, you know, that might be easiest by saying this is negative 1, this is 0, this is positive 1 and this is 2. I don't really like that because I'm using that top line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move everything down 1. And instead of me having that first tick representing negative 1, or I'm sorry, it will still represent negative 1. Just each value here, will, each increment will represent half a meter per second squared. So this is negative 1. This is 0. This is positive 1, and this is positive 2. So I'm going to plot the 2 meter per second squared constant all the way to the 5 second mark. During the next 10 seconds, we have zero accelerations. So we're going to have a break. And in the last 10 seconds, we're going to have negative 0.5 meter per second squared for acceleration, which is this guy here. I don't believe we need to connect the brake, but I'm going to anyhow, so I'm going to put a little dash line here to represent that instantaneous change in acceleration. Uh, this would have been worth three points. You don't really, you didn't need to explicitly show this work here, but it's helpful to do that in case you need to use it in a later part, and you will. You get three points, just one for each. No, actually, I lied. You're going to get one point for having an appropriate linear scale on the y-axis. You get one for showing your horizontal lines in three separate segments, and then you get one point for actually having the correct values. So, if assuming you knew that they were horizontal, constant acceleration, but you didn't know their values, you still could have gotten two of the three points for doing no math. B, calculate the position of the object at the five second mark. You can do this in a multitude of ways. I think the easiest way of doing it is to look back at the top of this velocity time graph and understand that the displacement is always represented by the area under the curve of a velocity time graph. And so that first five seconds, what I want to do is calculate the area of that little triangle, which is one half base times height. So this could be one half of five times ten. And so my work for B I'll just do right here. It's just going to be the area. 
So it'll be one half of base times height, which is one half of five seconds times ten meters per second, which is twenty-five. And then it'll be meters because it's displacement. B was worth a total of two points. You do need to show your work for this, so make sure you don't just jump right in and say 25 meters. C, on which segment of the graph is a net force acting on the object zero? Well, if you recall Newton's second law, F equals MA, we're going to need to justify this, so let's start off by writing the equation out. Your force is directly related to acceleration, so we're really looking for which segment do we have no acceleration. And that's going to be segment B. We already showed that work prior, so as long as you can indicate that you know the acceleration is zero, thus the force is zero, that'll be good enough justification. This is going to be worth a total of two points. D, we want to know the net force on the object during the first three seconds of the motion. So if we continue to look at Newton's second law, F equals MA, as long as we know the acceleration at that time, we know the force. And so if we look during that first three seconds, we don't even need to scroll up, we can just stay right here. The first three seconds, we have a 2 meter per second squared acceleration. It doesn't matter if it's during second 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. Any time during that 5 second period, the object is experiencing a net force of MA. So, for D, just do that off to the side here, D, your net force, will equal MA at that indication or that, that spot. And the mass was given up top here, I do believe. Yep, 0.4 kilograms. The acceleration I had already calculated of 2 meters per second squared, so there's no need to do that again. And we find that there's a net force of 0 0.8 newtons acting on the object. D is worth a value of a total of 2 points. E, we want to know the amount of work done on the object by the net force during the first 15 seconds. So work is force times displacement. Well, we do have a varying force over a 15 second period. We have a net force during the first 5 seconds of 0.8 newtons. If we look at our remaining 10 seconds of motion, there's actually no force, zero force. So there's actually no work being done during that 10 seconds. So ultimately, all we've got to show is that we're looking at 0.8 newtons, that net force, times its uh, displacement. So we need to use the displacement during the first five seconds, which we already found 25 meters. So we're going to deal with 0.8 times the 25 meters to show that during that first segment of constant acceleration, we have 20 joules of work. The second segment, the other 10 seconds that I haven't shown any math for, there is no work. I would still indicate that. I would indicate that this is for segment A, so maybe the work during A, and the work during B is zero, and then I would indicate that the net work is there for 20 joules, just to cover your bases. This is worth two points. Finally, F, for the interval of 15 to 25 seconds, is the work done on the object by the net force positive, negative, or zero? When we look up here, we know that there is a net work because there is acceleration, and acceleration is related to force, and force is related to work. So it's definitely, work is definitely taking place, and we want to know is it positive or negative. It's negative work because the object is slowing down. There's a couple ways you can justify it. You can talk about work being changed in energy. In this example, the energy is kinetic energy, and we start off with a higher kinetic energy, 10 meters per second times, the, uh, put it into the equation if you wanted to, but we're going to relate that to 10 meters per second. We're going to finish at a lower velocity, 5 meters per second, which means the kinetic energy goes down, which means work was acting against the object or slowing it down. You can toss it into words yourself. Ultimately, F was worth those. Um, it's not worth all of the remaining points. F was worth three points. First, indicating it's negative. Second, indicating you know it's negative because it is um, uh, the speed is decreasing and then ultimately indicating that you know that the work is a result of the decrease in speed. Just connect that dot. And lastly, you're going to get the, the last, I want to say there's still two points missing here. 3, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. No, 
the last point comes from proper units. Ultimately, it says in the answer key here that at least two parts need to show proper units. And that would probably be likely any, as long as you have clear units, uh, correct units for B and D or B and E or D and E, etc., you're going to get that extra point. So one point for units. All right, that's it.